Hey friends, it's me, Curtis. I'm standing in, well, I'm sitting really in my office. However, behind me on my green screen is a field, a patch, a garden filled with okra. Today's show, I'm going down home. I'm gonna be cooking with some okra and also some eggplant. I'm gonna do a couple of tapenades that I absolutely love. Um, <clears throat> give these recipes a try, please. Let's see if I can do so. I'm gonna switch um, my virtual background so you can see what the okra flower looks like. If I can, there it is. This is the okra flower. Is this not a beautiful plant? See if I can move my big head out of the way so you can see that block. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, I just, I, I love the way the okra flower looks. I'm gonna share with you some insights about this particular plant that um, that I love. I mean, and, and it also endears it to me. As a young boy, I didn't really enjoy or like okra as, an, as, a, as a food, uh, as a culinary professional, as, a, as a, someone who loves learning about the history of the culinary and food. Like this plant, this the seeds. I think I've got some coming up later in the show. There's some um, okra seeds. You'll see those along with other pieces of okra. And I don't want to give it away, but I talk about the history of okra and how it got to this country and why it's so near and dear to me. Um, yeah, I love it now. I love it. Stewed, fried, boiled, broiled. I mean, okra is just incredible. Uh, it's a It's a wonderful thickener. So if you can't find something to thicken up your soups or stews or whatever it is, think about okra. You can dice it really fine and go in your soup and it almost disappear and it really thickens it up um, quite nicely. Later in the show, we're going to go down south with my two boys when they were little bitty fellows, Curtis Jr. and Cole. I uh, wish I could see them more often. Um, this has been a very interesting week around our house, our house here, our home here. Um, a lot of reminiscing going on. I've, um, you know, um, shared a lot of my mother's recipes from books that she and I wrote together on this different social media sites. And I, and I want to start cooking more of mom's recipes. One in particular, her cornbread is featured. You'll see it in today's show. Um, you can go to my website, curtisakins.net or any of my social media posts and you can find it. I'm easy to find on social media. It's just Curtis Akins, um, the YouTube channel or here on CMCM or PCA up in, uh, in, in Petaluma. Um, I think it's a good show. We're going to have fun today um, doing Mama's Green Beans. And she made her green beans so many different ways. However, one of my favorite was when she would slice potatoes. And I'm just using a baking potato. I, I peel it, slice it. You'll see all that later on. Um, and that starch really adds something unique and wonderful to this dish. The two top of not, two top of nods I'm going to do for you. One featured eggplant. The other is featuring that okra we spoke about, okra tomatoes, um, and they are, it, they're both just fabulous. So I'm going to stop talking, get over to the green beans. So remember when buying fresh produce, there are, there are five, five t uh, tips, keys, I call them. One, look at the produce, make sure it looks good. Two, feel it, make sure it feels well, good. Because there's certain tips to that. In my cookbooks, I talk about these things. Um, smell it, you know, when, when fruits are ripe, they smell ripe. When they, when vegetables are bad, they smell bad. Um, buy what's in season. That's number four. Always try to buy what's in season. When you walk in the produce department, you'll see the thing that's most popular. That's that's the item that's in in season. And the fifth key, fifth tip is, ooh, and you see that little finger pop up. The fifth tip is to get to know your produce person. He, she, or they know when things came in. So give it a try, y'all. Enjoy today's show. Remember, it's about love spread love spread love peace i'm out no no i'm not i'm gonna have to start the show enjoy All right, now back in the day, we really had to string the green beans. Nowadays, they're growing a lot. Uh, the beans are grown what they call stringless. So, however, they do still have some little string. Now, what I do is I, I always break off the ends like mom did back in the day when we had those um, 
Kentucky Wonder, and they had a big string in them. So just snap off one end, the, usually the uh, stemmed end, and that's where the string will pull all the way down, like a zipper, um, and just take those off. One of the great things about stringing beans like this, you get to inspect each single bean to make sure that it's good enough for the pot. All right, we're going to speed this up and uh, so we can get on to making those beans. And that's another way of doing it. Just take a little knife and pull off the end of it. Voila. Well, let's get our equipment here, the pot that we're going to put them in. And I'm using a paring knife at times, or I'll just tear them with my, my hands. And this gives you a way, like I said earlier, to inspect each one of the beans. And you see the ones off to my left there, the right side of the screen, those aren't going to make the cut. And you see the pile of all those little um, clippings on the paper towel there. Those can go into your um, mulch pile or your compost. You can feed your vermiculture worms. Um, just make sure everything is ready to go into the pot. These are looking all right, good. Next, we're just going to wash the beans well, just warm water and uh, rinse them off. We're good to go. Why potato in the uh, green beans? Well, the starch in the potato helps to really soften and smooth out the flavor in the beans. Uh, it really adds something. It's absolutely fabulous. Well, it's Sunday afternoon, the football game in the background. Just rinse the potato along with the green beans. Let's chop it up and get going. All right, our potato, there it is on the cutting board. I'm just gonna cut it into little slices, cubes, add it to our green beans. That cameraman, we've got to get him to do a better job. But, oh, that's okay, but not great. Let's go to the, the stove top and cook our beans. All right, we've got our beans seasoned. We're going to add that olive oil to it. Turn the burner on, of course. Beans go on. We're going to bring that to a boil and then lower it and let them simmer until they're nice and tender, sometimes up to an hour, hour and a half, according to how you like, how tender you like your beans. I like mine really tender. Put a lid on, bring it to a boil, and uh, these are really good green beans. The ancient vegetable okra, a close relative to the cotton plant, originated in Northeast Africa. I'm told it is not uncommon to see wild okra growing today in Ethiopia and the Upper Nile region. More about okra as the show goes on. Um, I've got two dishes I'm going to make for you. using tomatoes, okra, onion. Also, eggplant and squash, all right? Um, they can be a tapenade. And later on, you're gonna see where I combine everything into kind of a soup. And one of the key ingredients, of course, is olive oil. At the bottom of the picture are okra seeds. Okra was and still is a staple in Africa, India, and the Mediterranean areas. This unique vegetable brought to America along with human cargo in the hull of slave ships, both ill-treated cargoes survived harsh times in their new homeland and have made a significant impact on the culinary world. Small okra is much more tender than those large ones that I'm showing you here in the photograph. Bon appetit. Let's prep our okra. We're gonna remove the stem end, then just cut it into small rings. Also in Africa, the words okra and gumbo are interchangeable. They both mean a, a stew-like substance, and you're gonna see that later in the show gonna use every bit of this okra and then we are almost ready to cook. There we go, our okra is cut into nice little rounds. We're going to add some olive oil, about maybe a tablespoon, even more. Remember olive oil, any of the oils that are made from vegetables, that means they float through the body. These are the non-saturated fats and they are good for your body. So a little more olive oil is always good. Well, it's time to get going. I think I lost my clip of me chopping onions. Never fear, there's another chopping scene coming up a little later, so I'm gonna kinda fake the funk here, just show you, hey, there's some onions that I've chopped up, boom. Pretend we're throwing them in. The magic of television. Just kidding. To the stove top we go, burner's on, and um, now we're gonna add some seasoning simply salt and pepper is all i'm going to use with this okra onions right now that salt is to help sweat the vegetables to bring the natural liquids out notice i haven't added any water yet we'll add some just a little bit later on all right let's prep our tomatoes again we're going to cut the stem end out and you notice i didn't um 
peel these if you want to. I think I've shown you many times how to peel the tomatoes. So hot water, cold water, skin shrink right off. Tomatoes are chopped. Let's go to the stove top. Now I'm going to add a little more olive oil to this, um, the okra. And next we're going to bring those beautiful tomatoes in. Um, and just put them right on top of the okra, the onions, because this is kind of a stewed okra. And it's just beautiful. More tomatoes are fine. And if you, if you use, you know, let's say a pound, pound and a half of tomatoes, you may not even need to add water because remember, tomatoes are like 99.99999% agua, liquid. So we'll add just a bit of water for these. I think I added maybe three, four tablespoons, like a quarter cup, something like that. Um, if you don't see me add the pepper, I will add pepper before this over. We'll just bring it to a boil and let Eggplant it Eggplant is one of the few vegetables that is not at its nutritional best when eaten raw. In fact, eggplant should not be consumed raw because it's a member of the nightshade family, which has things like poison oak, poison ivy. So eating raw eggplant could cause you to become sick. So try to cook that eggplant first. Here's a good recipe coming up. Eggplant, there are literally dozens, maybe even hundreds of varieties of eggplant. This one here, uh, it's according to where you live, is what it be labeled as or named. It could be Japanese or Chinese uh, eggplant. And a smaller type that looks like this is the Italian variety. Um, the Chinese variety that I'm used to working with is much brighter purple color. Now what I'm doing here is just slicing it up and I want you to see the seeds here. What I'm going to do is because I haven't been able to find these seeds in the last couple of years, I'm going to harvest some of these seeds. I'm just going to split this eggplant down the middle. I'm going to open it up so you can see the little seeds inside. They are very small. Now I'm going to this, I'm just kind of breaking it open so I can get seeds out of the middle. I'm going to take about two dozen or so, dry them, and then um, in about three to four well, in February, I think I'll start to uh, propagate these seeds so that I can grow this variety um, next spring. I love cooking and working with eggplant. It's funny, as a kid, my mom would prepare fried eggplant, and I had never had eggplant parm until I moved to New York City. You know, although we had fried eggplant like we did fried tomato, and it were fried green tomatoes, and they were absolutely fabulous. Those are the seeds. I'm going to save those, and we'll go to work with them in the spring. I'm laughing at myself because um, I did not show you chopping the eggplant. However, I just diced the eggplant up after I had it sliced open. Uh, and then I put the uh, onion in there as well, chopped onion as well. Now, um, when I normally make this recipe, I make it with zucchini and it's a little darker color and I like that. However, Lisa does not like zucchini. She loves yellow squash. So this year, the only squash I grew was um, the yellow, uh, yellow squash. So it tastes fabulous in this dish. I'm just gonna chop these up and uh, we'll add those to our pot. And yeah, we'll just dice these up, add them to the pot with the other squash. I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up. We'll dice the onion. Now here's that onion. The same technique was used to dice the onion for the first recipe. We'll dice these up, add them to the pot. Gonna add a little bit of salt and some pepper, of course, along with water. Then we'll take it to the stove top and let's do some cooking. Okay, so now here are the, um, the okra and tomatoes that are stewing. I'm gonna switch these to the other burner. Take a look there. You need to add more water, some salt, olive oil. I'm gonna switch this to the side. And then let's bring our squash pot <laughs> onto the stove top. And we're going to um, just turn the burner on and we've got everything in, place a lid on and uh, let's do some cooking as we say. So everything's coming together. Now we're gonna go back to that first recipe, that stewed okra. And remember we're cooking with tomatoes and we want to offset that acid. And one of the best ways to do that is just with a bit of sugar. 
we're going to add about, I think that's one teaspoon measurement there. Just sprinkling in. That's all we're going to do just to kind of balance out all of that sugar. Well, I'm not sugar, but it's going to balance out that acid in those tomatoes. Um, and it really kind of smooths it out. So uh, coming up, we're going to serve them as a top of knot. Then you'll get to see this good old southern meal I prepared with mama's cornbread and some other things. All right, everything is done. And on the right there is the tomato and okra stew. Tomatoes and okra on the left is that eggplant dish. And I gotta tell y'all, they taste good. And I'm just gonna, um, I've toasted a tortilla on the stove top. And I'm just gonna make a little, little pocket here. Um, I cannot tell you how great this is. Now this is truly down home, stewed okra, tomatoes and onion. And y'all, It'll make you want to kiss your mama, okay? That is so good. Now on the other side, the oak, um, the eggplant, and I gotta tell you again, it's just a nice slow cooked stewed uh, eggplant with the onion and squash. Again, this is beautiful with zucchini. Um, and again, I'm using that same tortilla. I'm gonna fold it over and the flavor is just incredible. Now. I'm gonna wrap this up in a minute. I'm gonna show you a typical down-home Sunday dinner. We've got cornbread I made, meatloaf, um, the green beans that... All right, so dinner, mama's cornbread, green beans. Mm. And meatloaf. Hey y'all, that's my mama, Laura Bell Curtis Akins. Coming up, my two boys. Let's go shopping at the farmer's market. Have you guys are ready. All right, three, two, one. Hello, whatever. Okay, that's not, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. That doesn't work, one, two, three. Three, two, one. So today, we're gonna go pick a knife. That was good, that was going well too, boy. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Curtis Akins. The show is Cooking Fresh. Now, you may not have access to a farm, but most of us have access to farmers at the farmer's market to buy our fresh produce. My son Curtis Jr. and Cole are with me. They have a whole day planned around the farmer's market while we go shopping to prepare a great fresh meal. Come on, let's go shopping. You ready, guys? That was pretty good, huh? Well, I think we got them excited about our show. You okay with that? That old saying that knowledge is power, it's even more true when it comes to your food. I mean, this is what powers us. If you want the best out of yourself, you gotta put the best in yourself. And that's what going to a farmer's market does. It puts you in charge. You get to meet the person that grew your food. I, I, isn't that wonderful? I mean, most of the time when you go to a farmer's market, the, the, the items that you are buying have been picked yesterday or some of the things were picked this morning. So you can't get them any fresh unless you take them up from your own garden, which ooh, I get tingles just thinking about this show and being able to, to, to teach people about their food and their food source. Uh, this is what I love about the farmer's market. Oh, this is heaven. Hi there, I'm Curtis Akins. Margaret Ann Tui. Margaret Ann The show is cooking fresh, Margaret Ann. You've got, can I pick your basil up? Is that okay? Sure. Now, fine. this is absolutely gorgeous, Margaret Ann. Did you guys raise all this? What am I looking for when I buy in fresh basil at the farmer's market? Um, just that it's green and standing up. You don't want it wilty. Green and standing Good, Good tip. Wow. Oh, is this arugula? It is. Oh, wow. Or, or rocket, as they say in uh, South America, right? Uh -huh. Can I Can I taste the leaf? Certainly. Now, this is totally organic, right? It is. We don't use any uh, chemicals. No chemicals. So I can eat this without washing it or anything, right? Unless there's a uh -huh. bug or we two, do. right? <laughs> mm. Oh, rocket salad is one of my favorites. Mm, I love that. Now this one, I've never seen this. That one is zucchini. called uh, Costata Romanesco. It's an Italian heirloom. Uh, it's got a lot more flavor than the, the green zucchinis. All right, I'm going to take a couple of to, to Costata. 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 Costata Romanesco. My Italiano is eh. Horrible. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, and this one? Is Zephyr. That it's a hybrid called Zephyr. Okay, cool. Let's get, we're going to get those three. Because I'm thinking, David, that we've got stuff for a tomato salad. And I'm going to do a nice little stir fry. Sure. Um, with some maybe brown rice or some, a nice uh, basmatic rice, if I can find some in the market today. The smells, the sounds, the sights of all this food is just, ah, oh, it's like a symphony. I, I, you know, 
And it, it's important for the community. Think about it. You take an area, if it could be in a part of town that might be slipping a little bit. You put a farmer's market there and people come back to this. Oh, I, wow, what did I miss by not coming to the Pepper Place district of Birmingham? Or in San Rafael, California, there's a great market. This is right downtown on 4th Street. And so farmer's markets help revitalize the city. They help bring people back in. And then those of us who go shop at these markets, we get all these great food items. Hey, now you folks at home, I'm going to swipe a little piece of rosemary. I could get locked up for this one, but maybe I can go trade a hug for all, that's all the rosemary we need for our stir fry there. I love that smell. I think you guys are kid pulling my leg. You really, really, there's a blue ear corn that we grind up to make blue grits. So how would I cook these? Uh, same way you cook these. Okay, so a little water, bring it to a boil, add my grits, stir it nice and so, a little butter. It's got the recipe. There's a recipe on the back. You think of everything, don't you? We do our stir fry with grits instead of uh, rice. Yep. Yeah. Oh my lord! <laughs> Nectar of the gods, right there, baby. This is wonderful. Mom, thank you so much. Can I get a hug? Okay. I'm gonna come around the counter and get you get a hug here, y'all. Okay. Now I've been calling your mom. Now my mother's over in Conyers, Georgia. She's gonna say, "Now you can't." I just love people. Always have, always will. You know, um, on my gravestone, you know, father of two, loved everybody he met. In one of my cookbooks I wrote, um, if I could have five minutes with every person on the face of the earth, I'd love to do that. Not, you know, five minutes to shake their hand and give them a hug, but five minutes of where we just look at each other's eyes and go, okay, Give me something about you that I'm going to keep forever. What the celebrity chefs are right now, 15 years these farmers are going to be that. Mark my words. 15 years from now, they're going to be talking about the farmer in, you know, the black belt of Alabama. They're going to be talking about the, you know, the wonderful farmers in uh, upstate New York, or this guy grows this, or this woman does that, you know? And hopefully you heard it first on Cooking Fresh. Alrighty, from farmer's market to the kitchen. I'm not sure if I like shopping more or cooking more. I just know I love them both. Uh, let's recap the things we picked up today to create our meal. We got those gorgeous heirloom tomatoes. Mmm, beautiful, beautiful. And we've got fresh basil, which we're going to work with in our tomato and tomato and onion salad. Picked up an onion to go with that. And over here, we've got these gorgeous vegetables from uh, from Snow's Bend Farm. Organic vegetables. Ooh. One more thing, which is going to be kind of the base of our little saute, a little stir fry, will be those um, pink eyed peas. Those are gorgeous, fresh peas there. Um, what else? Oh, the blue grits that we're going to use. Instead of rice, we're going to serve our, um, our stir fry with those um, blue grits. So, why don't I wash up our vegetables and then we'll get to chopping, dicing, slicing, and some sauteing. Food uh, is, in the South, food is a mainstay. Everything happens, well, pretty much in this country now, if you think about it. You know, around the kitchen table or in the kitchen is, when, it, when a party's going on, the best place to be is in the kitchen, you know? Or around the grill if you're cooking outside. So, uh, food is kind of a center. Um, so I use that as my vehicle to go out and speak to the world. You notice I've cut the onion in half, and we're gonna dice these really fine. I don't want them too big for my, um, my saute. Notice how we're gonna dice this onion fine. We're gonna slice through one, slice through twice, and we're gonna slice downwards. And watch how fine this dice is. Isn't this gorgeous? Nice diced vegetables, nice little slices of vegetables. Let me slice this open so you can see it at home. How the Japanese eggplant, and I love doing this when I'm at home, is taking and putting these on the grill. There are absolutely no seeds at all in that. So people talking about making an eggplant, a seed-free eggplant, Parmesan, try it with the Japanese eggplant. Why cook fresh? The fresher the food, the more nutrients stay in it. 
the less cooking we do to that food, the more nutrients stay in as well. The fresher the food, the better the food, the better the food for you. Now the recipes we're going to do today, we're not going to overcook. We're going to do a little saute, we're going to make the grits, and we're going to make a, a tomato salad, which all we're going to do is slice the tomatoes. So all the research is telling us fresh food is better for us. So we want to teach people how to cook fresh and healthy. All our vegetables are chopped, so let's get to sauteing. Let's take the cutting board over, and we're going to season our olive oil, which is, ooh, just at the smoky point, with our onions. Ah, oh, don't you just love that sound? And the garlic. What you want to do at home is allow these to cook for about a minute or so, or until the onions become translucent. While those are cooking, let's go with these purple eye peas. I like those gorgeous fresh peas, just yesterday picked. We're going to add those right there. Now I'm going to show you a trick that I learned years ago from my mama about keeping the flavor in the pan. I'm going to place a lid on here. Now this stops the sauteing, but we're not going to stop it for long. I just want to trap that moisture in there to help those peas stay nice and moist and plumping up. So I want to see America picking their food, choosing their food. You know, it's just the whole idea of farm fresh. It's, it's a time that has come back, you know? Now you come down here like in, to Alabama or out in California where you've got beautiful silver queen corn or you've got wonderful heirloom tomatoes, varieties that you don't see on common grocery store shelves because they won't stack well. Nowadays, these big agri-farms are breeding tomatoes so they stack well, they ship well, they look good but have no flavor. Those are things that we want people that watch this show to, uh, to know, how to go buy a good tomato. You look at it, a tomato should look good, it should feel good, it should smell good, most importantly, it should taste good, <laughs> you know? And that's what happens, and it's got all those nutrients in there. So we want to give people that knowledge, that power to take control of their food dollar. Well, the shopping's done, the cooking's done. Hmm, what's left? The eating part. Ooh, I should serve some up, huh? So cooking fresh is about health. It's about a healthy, wonderful life. It's about, you know, a breath of fresh air. It's about putting good things into you and bringing good things out. How much it tastes better, it feels better, it has wonderful textures. It's about me loving to cook with wonderful ingredients. It's about sharing these loving people that we meet in a farmer's market with our viewers. You know, um, so if I had to pick one word what cooking fresh is, it's love. Ready guys? <laughs> Last shot. <laughs> Mm. Thanks, Kurt.